Hello students, happy morning. Class 12 physics, unit 2, current electricity revision continuation video. In our previous class, we discussed the book bag question from the subtopic that is Kitsch of Law. Here some more questions are pending that we see by today. Our second question, second long answer question that is obtain the condition for bridge balance in Wheatstone Bridge. Okay. Here in this question, we are applying the Kitsch of Law on finding the bridge balance for that Wheatstone Bridge. Okay. Using that uh, bridge balance condition, we are finding the unknown resistor in the circuit. Okay. See, the question is obtain the condition for a bridge balance in Wheatstone Bridge. Okay. Here, I am considering the four resistor. Okay. That is named as PQRS. That is connected like this form a bridge. P, Q, R, S. Okay. Then there is a galvanometer that is connected in between the point B and D. Okay. And the free terminals that are C and D are connected with a battery of providing EMF psi. Okay. Then after the connection of battery, there will be a current in the circuit that is I. This current enter at the point A, then it will be split up as I1 in the branch AB and I2 in the branch AD. Okay, then the current I1 is split as IG in branch BD and I3 in branch BC. Okay, then the current in the branch DC is a combination of IG and I2. Okay, that is I4. Okay, then the current I3 and I4 combine at the point C, then it again as I. Okay, so here I am applying Kitschoff current rule at the junction B. Okay, we know Kitschoff current rule said that algebraic sum of the current meeting at the junction is 0. Okay, if current enter is junction that is taken as positive, current leaving the junction is taken as negative. Here it is a junction B. At that point, I1 is a current entering, so plus I1. But IG and I3 are current leaving junction, so it can be taken as minus IG minus I3. Okay, so we can write I1 minus IG minus I3 is equal to 0. Okay, then after we are applying Kitschoff first rule at the junction D. Here, this point, the current I2 is entering the junction and the current IG is entering the junction. Okay, but the current I4 is leaving the junction, so we can write i2 plus ig minus i4 is equal to 0. Okay. Then after I am applying Kitsch of voltage rule. That is a second rule. Okay. To the closed path. Okay. That means closed loop. That is A, B, D, A. We know Kitsch of second rule. That is voltage rule said. It is applied to a closed loop. For that the product of or algebraic sum of the product of current and the resistance in each part of the loop is equal to algebraic sum of the emf included in the loop okay here first of all we are um, uh, seeing for the left side okay so algebraic sum of product of current and resistance i1 p okay then we are flowing in this direction current is flowing in this direction then current in the circuit is the branch is ig and the resistance of the column is G. Then we can write IgG because we are flowing from A to B then B to D. Okay. Our desired direction and the direction of the current is same. We can write in positive. Okay. Then we are going from D to A but the current is coming from A to D so we can write minus I to R. Okay. That is equal to 0 because there is no EMF included in that loop. Okay, this loop A, B, D, A. Then next, uh, applying Kitsch of voltage rule to the loop A, B, C, D, A. For that, we can write I1, P plus I3, Q. Okay, but we are going from C to D. Here, the current is coming from D to C. We can write minus I4, yes. Here also minus I2, R. That is equal to 0 because there is no EMF. Okay, then next. If suppose the point B and D are at same potential, okay, there is no potential difference. That means the point B and D are at same potential, so there is no 
transfer of charge so the current flowing through the galvanometer will be zero i am considering ig as zero okay because the point b and d are at a same potential okay then i put ig in the equation 1 2 and equation 3 okay then equation 1 became i1 is equal to i3 equation 2 became i2 is equal to i4 then equation 3 became i1p is equal to i2 r okay we are get, we get this okay then after i am substituting this value in equation 4 then we get i1p plus i i1q minus i2 s minus i i2 r is equal to 0 okay taking i1 and i2 as common we get this one then dividing this entire equation by this equation okay then we get p plus q by p is equal to r plus s by r on solving this we get p by q is equal to r by s okay this is a condition for bridge balance okay to answer this question what are the things needed to answer the question let me see this is from kirchhoff rules okay question number 2 condition for bridge balance okay to answer the question first of all we need to we need to know uh, the uh, bridge balance circuit okay this is a wheatstone bridge here this wheatstone bridge consists of three res- sorry four resistor okay p q r s p then q r then yes okay here for this we need to know is set okay starting from p then q then r then yes okay this is named as a this is b this is c this is d okay we know very well b and d are connected with a galvanometer g okay the free terminal a and c are connected with a potential difference of uh, uh, battery or potential difference psi okay after the connection there will be a current that is i this current is split up into i1 in the branch here then here it is i2 this i1 is split up as ig here i3 okay here the ig and i2 combine it form i4 okay then again it come back as i here for that we are applying kirchhoff current rule at the junction b kirchhoff current rule always the current rule is applied at a junction okay at the junction b then we know i1 is current enter in the junction i3 and ig are leaving junction we can write i1 minus ig minus i3 is equal to 0 okay then at at the junction at the junction d okay at the junction d we know i2 entering and ig also entering but i4 is leaving so we can write i2 plus i4 sorry i2 plus ig minus i4 is equal to 0 this is named as equation 1 this is named as equation 2 okay then next i am applying kirchhoff voltage rule to the loop okay that is a b d a we are applying voltage rule loop uh, voltage rule to the loop a b d a so we can write product of current and resistance i1 p plus i g g we are reversing so we can write minus i2 r that is equal to 0 because there is no emf in that loop then next catch off voltage rule to loop a b c d again a okay so we can write this one as okay here i am writing that is i1p okay plus i3q 
then minus i4 s then minus i2 r that is equal to 0 because there is no emf we know the point b and d are at the same potential okay so there is no current flow so the current to flow in the galvanometer is zero okay put this value in equation 1 2 and 3 okay this is equation 3 then we get i1 is equal to that is i3 then i2 is equal to that is i4 okay then one more expression that is third equation became i1p is equal to i2r okay substitute these two things in equation 4 okay i1 and i2 in equation 4 then we get i1p plus i3 became i1 okay then i1q minus here this is i4 this i4 became i2 okay i2s minus i2r that is equal to 0 taking minus on uh, right side then we get i1p plus i1q that is equal to i2s plus i2r okay here the common term is i1 then p plus q that is equal to i2s plus r okay dividing this expression by this value okay then we get i1p here i2r i2 i2 cancel i1 i1 cancel then we get p plus q by p is equal to s plus r by r okay on solving this p by p plus q by p this big this one became s by r plus r by r okay this is going to cancel became one this one going to cancel became one then this one one also cancelled okay then q by p is equal to s by r okay r we can write p by q is equal to r by s this is a condition for bridge balance okay by knowing three resistor value we can find the unknown resistor okay if suppose we know r s q value we can find the p value using wheatstone bridge okay the next question explain the determination of unknown resistance using meter bridge okay here meter bridge is an one more form of wheatstone bridge using this wheatstone, uh, using this meter bridge we can find the unknown resistance value okay by using the bridge balance condition that is p by q is equal to r by s first of all we need to know how to draw the diagram okay first of all this is the diagram he, here it consists of a magnet wire of one meter length okay that is a b that is placed on a wooden board uh, and it is fixed uh, at the two side by using a copper strip that is named as c and d here one more copper strip is there that is E. Okay. This copper strip encloses two gap that is G1 and G2. Okay. Then the point A and B of the potentiometer wire that are connected with the leg line cell and key. Across the wire there will be a scale. Okay. Uh, then the point E is connected with the jaggy through galvanometer and high resistance. Okay. This is a circuit construction. Then next next uh, let me move for the working okay if suppose i am moving the jockey on the wire okay here at a particular point the galvanometer shows zero deflection that means the point e and point j are at the same potential okay that we know then this resistance okay we know p by q is equal to r by s okay here it is p here it is q p is the known uh, unknown resistance okay and q is a known resistance that is standard resistance okay then we know that is uh, we are applying that bridge balance condition p by q is equal to r by s okay this is r this is s this length this length wire having the resistance r this length wire having the resistance s okay we can write p by q is equal to r by s this r replace the resistance of this wire aj okay then the resistance of that wire is r into aj okay here r is a resistance per unit length aj is a length of this wire and jb is a length of this wire remaining wire and here all r we know very well that is a resistance per unit length okay 
then cancelling r then we get p by q is equal to aj by jb aj is, is a balancing length l1 here l2 also a balancing length okay so we can write p, p is equal to q l1 by l2 by knowing one resistance okay we can easily find the unknown resistance okay using meter bridge here this meter bridge is a one of the experiment uh, for your practicals okay this is a first experiment okay using this we can find the resistance then by knowing the specific resistance formula that is rho is equal to ar by l we can find the resistivity or specific resistance of that material okay uh, to answer this question what are the important points needed okay let me see question is number 3 that is meter bridge okay meter bridge here the meter bridge consists of uniform magnet wire that is ab okay along this wire there will be a meter scale okay then the point a and b are fixed in a copper strip okay this is that copper strip it is named as c and d in between uh, there is a one more copper strip in between the two coppers okay that is named as e by placing this copper a copper strip there uh, it enclose a gap that is g1 and g2 okay in the place of g1 we are placing the unknown resistance that is named as p here we are placing the known resistance okay that is q then the point e is connected with the jacky through galvanometer in order to save the galvanometer we need i resistance then jacky it is a it, it is used to make contact on the wire okay then the point c is connected with the leg lang cell of em of psi and there is a key okay this is primary circuit here this is a secondary circuit okay circuit connection are met then next we are moving the then working okay after this connection i am moving the jacky and the magnet wire okay at a particular point okay at the point j this is a length l1 okay here this is a length l2 at that point the galvanometer shows zero deflection okay that means the potential at e and j are same so galvanometer shows zero deflection we know the condition for bridge balance that is p by q is equal to r by s we know this is p this is q then this length wire replaces the resistance value of r then we can write r a j okay this is a yes this resistance replaces the value of uh, r a that is j p okay cancelling this we get p by q is equal to aj by jb okay here aj is l1 and the jb is l2 p by q is equal to l1 by l2 if suppose we need the unknown resistance alone then p is equal to q l1 by l2 okay by knowing the unknown resistance sorry by knowing the uh, knowing the uh, that is l1 and l2 balancing length we can find the unknown resistance okay there is a error in this experiment that is due to the imperfect contact okay on this place this is eliminated by getting uh, one more readings that means a set of one more reading okay by interchanging p and q okay uh, uh, right and left gaps are interchanged the next question that is how the emf of the two cells are compared using potentiometer this also a Uh, practical question okay here in using this apparatus we can find the ratio of the emf or we can find the emf of the one cell by knowing one more cell okay we know the emf of the uh, cell 2 okay but we don't know the emf of the cell 1 we can find this by using this apparatus okay this is nothing but a potentiometer setup okay here we can compare the emf of the two cell by using this potentiometer okay for this 
we need a potentiometer wire that is CD. Okay, this C is connected with a battery key rheostat. Okay, or in series that make a primary circuit. And the point C of the potentiometer wire is connected to the M of the DPDD switch. That, that is double pole, double throw switch. Okay, and here N is connected with the jacky through galvanometer and high resistance. Okay, we know very well jacky is made contact on the wire. Okay, then M1 and N1 of the DPDD switch is connected with the cell of EM of psi 1 and M2 and N2 are connected with the cell of EM of psi 2. Okay, then this is the construction of the device. Okay, then let me move for the working. Okay. I am moving the DPDD switch towards the cell cell of EM of psi 1. Okay. Then this cell is included in the circuit. I am moving the jacky um, on the wire. Okay. Potentiometer wire. Okay. At a particular point the galvanometer shows zero deflection. That means the potential drop across the wire is equal to EMF of the cell. Okay. That is psi 1 is equal to here I is a current flowing the circuit. Okay. I R L1. Okay. We are getting. If I move the first of all the DPDD switch is pressed towards the cell of EMF psi 1. After that I am moving the jacky on the potentiometer wire. At a particular point the galvanometer shows zero deflection. That means the EMF value is equal to the potential drop across the length CG. Okay, that is psi 1 is equal to IR L1. Okay, then after I am moving the uh, DPDT switch towards the cell of EMF psi 2, at that point it shows zero deflection at some other point. Okay, at that case the EMF psi 2 is equal to potential drop across the balancing length CJ2, CJ2 or CJ okay C we can write psi 1 is equal to IRL1 psi 2 is equal to IRL2 and dividing this we get psi 1 by psi 2 is equal to L1 by L2 then we need the value of psi 2 we can write psi 2 is equal to psi L2 by L1 okay let me see what are the important key points needed to answer the question? Okay. Compare the EMF of the cell using potentiometer. Using potentiometer. Okay, for this, first of all, we need a potentiometer that is CD. Okay, CD is a potentiometer wire. The C is connected with a battery, then key, then rheostat. We know rheostat is a device that is used to change the resistance. Okay, BT that is key K, rheostat RH. This is a primary circuit. Then the point C is connected with the M of the DPDD switch. Okay. And the point N is connected with the jacky through galvanometer and high resistance. Okay. Then M1, N1 of the DPDD switch that is connected with cell of EM of Psi1. Here M2, N2, M2, N2 that are connected to the cell of EM of Psi2. Okay, this is a circuit connections are made. Okay, then next I am pressing the DPDD switch towards the cell of, e, cell of EM of Psi1. Okay, then this cell is included in the circuit. Then the potential drop across CJ that is equal to EM of the cell. That means potential drop across CJ is equal to EMF of the cell. Okay. We know potential drop that is I R L1. Okay. Our first case. Then second case. Psi 2 is included. Okay. For that case potential drop across CJ that is equal to psi 2 
we can write psi 2 is equal to i r l 2 ok by dividing this we get psi 1 by psi 2 is equal to i r l 1 by i r l 2 on cancelling this we get psi 1 by psi 2 is equal to l 1 by l 2 by knowing the value of uh, one cell emf we can find the another cell emf this is the question they asked in um, 2020 uh, public exam okay then our next topic heating effect of electric current okay here there is a only one question that is very short answer question it state joules heating law okay we know when a current flowing through a conductor it produces heating effect as well as magnetic effect okay this is a question from heating effect of electric current okay uh, let me see what Joule's law states. The heat developed in an electrical circuit due to the flow of current varies directly as square of the current, resistance of the conductor and time of flow of the current. Okay. To answer the question, you have to know H is equal to I square RT. Okay. H is the heat developed in the conductor when the current flowing through the circuit. Okay. H is equal to I square RT. The heat developed in the conductor is directly proportional to square of the current. Directly proportional to square of uh, that is the resistance of the circuit. Directly proportional to time passage of the current. Okay. Then let me move for a thermoelectric effect. Okay. Here there is uh, three questions. First one is what is feedback effect? Okay. For to answer the question, you have to know what is thermocouple. Okay. Thermocouple means two dissimilar metal connected to form a junction. Okay. That is known as thermocouple. Okay. Here we are considering thermocouple in a closed circuit consisting of two dissimilar metal. When the junctions are maintained at a different temperature, then it produces EMF. Okay. Or potential difference. That is known as Seebeck effect. Okay. Then Peltier effect. When the electric current is passed through a circuit of thermocouple, okay, heat is evolved at one junction and absorbed at a other junction. Okay. Here it is a reverse of Seebeck effect. Peltier effect is a reverse of Seebeck effect. We are here we are applying heat and getting the EMF. Here we are applying the current and getting the um, heat. Okay. Um, here we are applying the temperature difference. Okay. And getting the EMF. Here in Peltier effect, applying the current, we are getting the temperature difference. Okay. Then what is Thomson effect? Here I consider a conductor, the conductor have the two points, the two points are maintained at different temperature, there will be a different electron density, okay, then it will produce a potential difference, okay, see, if two points in a conductor are at a different temperature, the density of the electron at this point will differ, as a result the potential difference is created, okay, between these points, this is known as Thomson effect, this is also a reversible effect, okay. C. First of all, we need to know what is Seebeck effect. Seebeck effect. Okay. Here, in a closed circuit consisting of two dissimilar metal. Okay. Here I consider two dissimilar metal. Okay. This is copper. This is iron. This is an iron metal, this is a copper metal. Here I am putting a uh, galvanometer G. Okay. Here this is junction 1, this is junction 2. Okay. First of all, this junction is maintained at a uh, maintained as cold junction. Okay. Here it is a junction that is hot junction. Okay. Here I am putting a Bunsen flame hard junction ok then there will be a flow of current ok from copper to sorry from the point uh, from the junction 1 the current flow from iron to copper ok but for the junction 2 that is an odd junction the current flow from copper to iron ok then next C here two dissimilar metal are maintained different temperature 
then it is known as thermocouple there will be a emf in the circuit okay this produce an emf this is known as seebeck effect then peltier effect <coughs> peltier effect okay here it is a reverse effect of seebeck effect okay for this we need a thermocouple okay that is copper then iron okay this thermocouple here i am putting a battery providing potential difference v okay it is positive it is negative then applying current current is flowing from positive potential to negative potential that is copper here it is iron okay okay like this current will flow okay then this point will be cold heat is absorbed this point will be hot that is heat is evolved okay then next we know very well that is thomson effect in thomson effect here we are considering a metal okay this metal he is heated if two points are at a different temperature okay different temperature there will be a different electron density due to that it create an emf okay that means potential difference then our last uh, last question that is application of seebeck effect okay seebeck effect is used in thermoelectric generator okay this type of generator are used in automobiles and power plants in power plant it is used to convert waste heat into electricity okay in automobiles it is used to increase the fuel efficiency okay then that is the third point it is also used uh, used in thermocouple and thermopile to measure the temperature difference between the two object okay okay students lesson 2 is completed then let me move for the lesson 3 by tomorrow you have to make a short note on these questions okay this is your homework thank you